we will just introduce the concept of change then uh, we will talk about why <coughs> change or initial change has to be very planned otherwise it doesn't happen then people resist to change always why do they do it we will use certain standard theories called Levin's force field theory this is something like physics uh, uh, <coughs> coming contributing to the behavioral sciences so Kurt Levin uh, contributes to <coughs> Uh, concept of change using a theory called force field analysis and it, it is something similar to Newton's third law we will talk about those things very peacefully tomorrow but not today so what we'll do is uh, here is an interesting uh, quote I want all of you to read and and also find out who could have said this a very popular figure in the history said this you can guess the name <coughs> And also in which year this quote was made. Shouldn't take much time. It's more than 2000 years old. 2000, no, today is 2021, right? This year is 2021. So 2021 plus 322. So uh, 2341 years ago. It's much older quote. You could at least guess 200 years ago. 18th century means 200 years ago, right? But it is more than that. Thousands of years. So, when I read this, I was astonished actually. Uh, did, is there anything called really change occurring? Young people are same as they were before. Our time also we were just like them and then today when I look at my uh, students in, uh, in the institute the same story happens my own children of course so what I'm trying to say uh, young people have been always alike what is changing is always a, a puzzle to me is there really change occurring you may only see technology advancing new gadgets are emerging new constructions are happening but what is happening everything is one and the same no you get up early in the morning the day is done and then you have uh, the night it's all going on and on and on for thousands of years what is changing is attitudes have not attitudes are one and the same lifestyles are one and the same where are they changing we are calling what is modern today for us aristotle time it was modern that day so modernity was there ever since the beginning from right from stone age people started improving so that was called modernity so stone age today is uh, ancient time for us but for them it was modernity so it's all in the mind i would say that but here when we are con referring to the concept of uh, change we are addressing it in a different context like change which is favorable for our nations to uh, improve their performance improve their productivity uh, and then be successful or be more profitable that's what ultimate purpose is change should be addressing it towards that end <clears throat> now i want to introduce <clears throat> few concepts before i move into it first concept is called growth second concept is called change third concept is called development and the last concept is called effectiveness now what do you mean by growth uh, it's a it's a it's a continuous phenomenon where there is life there is growth we say so for example you sow a seed and the seed germinates the roots go down and the shoots come out so there is a plant which is growing so how long would it grow when would you notice that there is a change in this plant this plant continues to grow uh, and then uh, it branches out and then uh, its trunk is becoming larger the branches are also becoming stronger and then uh, one day suddenly these branches start uh, budding so you will find buds all around the branches and then you are in, 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 witness something happening to this plant that's called change so it is budding that means it could become uh, fruits so once the buds are there it blossoms so birds and the blossoms are blossoming of these flowers uh, 
is an evidence of change in this plant or the tree and then once these flowers uh, pollinate they become fruits so that means this plant is developing if a plant does not bear fruits it's not developed plant so you are able to understand the concepts now so plant grows when the buds and the flowers appear it is change then once these flowers become fruits that means this arnation is developing that means there is a fruit there is a profit and then finally when there is plenty of fruit what will we do we share all those fruits we don't eat it on our own we don't eat everything for ourselves keep it for ourselves we eat some portion of it and we share it with all our neighborhood uh, families when we share it to so many people who are expecting uh, fruit from this plant or a tree and when this tree sufficiently feeds people around it we call it an effective tree so same analogy is applicable to ornations also ornations should grow they should change they should uh, develop and they should be effective and towards that end our subject called ornational behavior contributes to it we have to continuously contribute to it now we also know that uh, arnations uh, like plants arnations grow if what if certain times i have noticed plants grow in a very chaotic manner very disordered they don't go straight upwards sometimes they grow uh, sideways and then stunted growth as it whatever it wants it grows in that direction so when it grows like that nobody expects this plant is doing well because it is growing uh, uh, in a very disordered fashion why because nobody helped it uh, for example you would have noticed uh, during the plantation time all these government authorities what they would do they they would put uh, a bamboo stick in the center of uh, the plant and then tie it to that bamboo stick so that the plant will not lean uh, sideways it will grow straight with the support of the bamboo tree and then they'll also put a fence around it so that Uh, the animals will not eat away and what i would call this is this way of uh, plantation is called planned uh, plantation planned growth similarly uh, what if uh, it is not budding after some time then you should know there is something wrong with this plant maybe it doesn't have enough nutrition maybe the soil is not supporting maybe something else maybe there is no inadequate sunshine there can be various reasons so you have to create all those atmospheres then only this plant will uh, grow in a planned manner so what if you plan all that you implement all of those fertilizers manures and then you let the sunshine and then adequate water probably it starts budding that's what it's called planned change so when you witness that this the plant is not properly growing you initiate some improvements in it that's what we call planned change so when you introduced it you caught the birds and the uh, flowers and then the fruits that means because of the planned change this pla- this plant started giving flowers and then fruits and then you uh, pluck the fruits and share it with all the stakeholders or all the people around it everybody would ask when would this plant give fruit that means they are all stakeholders so you have to make them satisfied and therefore if the plant is able to enough feed all the people around it it's the most successful tree or plant i would call it same analogy is applicable even to the ornations if ornation can satisfy all its stakeholders called employees customers suppliers distributors society government authorities and so on shareholders and the owners of the company if all are satisfied that ornation should be treated as an effective ornization you may have more fruits but people are unhappy that's not an ineffective ornation everybody must be happy satisfied with this ornation because its profits were distributed shared by amongst all the people so with that kind of a small story or analogy for comparisons let's move into uh, what is called uh, change 
So if you look at some of these words, uh, these are very interesting words. I think somebody can take a photo snap or a screenshot of it and then try to understand each of these words is giving you some kind of a positive uh, energy, impact, unpack, uh, deep dive, uh, outside of the box, bleeding edge, ideate, amplify, deliverable, drill down, ping, bandwidth, reach out. All these are expressions of certain kind of dynamism or action. Opposing to which people say, come on, what we will do? Let's not do it. Uh, let's forget about it. These are all the ideas which are discouraging people from changing. So one should be willing to enjoy changes in life and always willing to change yourselves around. I would always explain, explain people that uh, if you don't believe in Vastu, I think you can do wonders in your life because you can change the layouts of your house, home plan they call it. You can change the sofa direction uh, from one place to the other place. You can change your TV set uh, location from one place to the other place. Why you should always be there at one place? That means you don't want to change. Then you can change the bedroom layout. If you don't believe in Vastu, you can change the bedroom. Uh, you can uh, change the cot directions. Sometimes from far away from the window, sometimes closer to the window. You can change like that. Then your uh, living room, your uh, uh, kitchen. That's another interesting area. Uh, home plans, there are so many softwares available. So what you can do, download that software and then keep changing your uh, home layouts. You would see that, you know, there's a lot of vibrance, a lot of energy in your house. Why? Because it keeps changing. So every time somebody comes, they say, come on, wow, it looks so wonderful. Why? Because you kept changing. So what I'm trying to say, it should be on your minds rather than uh, your demonstration. So your mind should be susceptible to change. But unfortunately, most of us, they, we don't want to change. Definitely, we don't want to change. Uh, yeah, times are changing. People are changing. Cultures are changing. Technology is changing. Governments are changing. Economy is changing. Of course, our nations also are changing. What does it further mean? Change is something which is very inevitable. It's a never-ending story. It's a never-ending story and it's a, something we call constant. What is constant in this world? Change. So let's see what is it. It refers to any transformation. That's a very interesting uh, definition. Transformation, that means from, from uh, caterpillar to butterfly. Caterpillar is not uh, attractive, but look at the butterfly. That's exactly called transformation from one stage to the other stage. So your ordinations also have to change from one stage to the other stage. Now, in what aspects? In the culture, in the design, or in the functioning of the ordination? So, there's another interesting way of looking at it. It's called any alteration to the existing situation. Status quo means things as they are. Any alteration to the existing status quo should be also defined as change. So, it could be treated as, it could be defined as transformation. It could be treated as alteration. Though concept of alteration is much older, but in the modern times, we are talking about transformation. So any or any transformation in the culture, design, functioning of an organization or the entire uh, status of the organization, we call it as change. Now, there are various types of change. I, I'll stop it here and then we will move towards uh, tomorrow's uh, class and then we'll understand it more deeper. Now. There are various models, like if you want to bring about a change in a hospital, it's very difficult to bring about change in particularly government hospitals. I would advise you to buy a book called Strong Medicine. That's the name of a book called Strong Medicine by Arthur Haley. Arthur Haley. He wrote a book called Strong Medicine. It's a very interesting book in which uh, it's a, actually a novel, not a book, not a textbook, it's a novel. In this book, a young uh, uh, resident doctor struggles 
to bring about change in a government hospital. So if you read it, you will know that how he would uh, consciously plan and bring about it, bring about those changes in that hospital. For example, in Nim's hospital, if you want to bring about a change, it's uh, almost near impossible. Uh, people react, people resist. I have seen uh, in 1998, I think 97, 98, correct. There is one used to be one gentleman by name Avadhanlu, IT manager he was. This gentleman wanted to introduce a networking uh, uh, operating system in the entire hospital. There was a lot of resistance. Uh, lot of resistance. Though he had made all his attempts to bring about it, but finally it was not very successful. So, but today you are compelled to use uh, all those uh, computers which are networked. But those days there was a lot of resistance. And then uh, uh, those days I remember there was some software uh, which was a very difficult software for people to learn and operate uh, networking computers, network computing. I don't remember which software was it. So uh, training was uh, struggling. Government employees are reluctant to learn new skills and this gentleman struggled until his retirement. So if you have an opportunity someday when he's around, you can listen to him, call him to your class and ask him how he struggled to introduce change in that hospital. So change is not easy. So there are various types of organizational changes. One is called anticipatory changes. Second one is reactive changes. Third one is incremental change. And the last one is strategic change. So anticipatory, you plan the changes based on certain expected situations. What is likely to happen next year? Accordingly, you anticipate and change. Then reactive change, in response to unexpected situations, you change. That is called reactive. Then incremental change, you adjust your organizational subsystems uh, time to time and then keep introducing some change today, some change tomorrow. Likewise, as in the due course, you can completely introduce change. That's what we call incremental. That means step by step. And the next one is called strategic change. That means altering the overall direction of the organization. The next five years to 15 years, where do you want to see your hospital? That's what we call strategic change. So I'll stop here.